So first of all, hello, everyone. Welcome to the second online edition of eBay's research seminars. Thank you all for coming. This version is, in fact, a collaborative lecture hosted by eBay and Gritim, the interdisciplinary research group on immigration at the Pompeo Fabra. My name is Charlie Roger. I'm an assistant professor at eBay and one of the hosts with Leslie Ann Daniels of eBay's research seminar series. It's my pleasure today to introduce you to Thomas Lacroix. Thomas is a CNRS research fellow in geography, an associate researcher at the International Migration Institute at Oxford University, and associate editor at Migration Studies. Needless to say, with a CV like that, he is an expert on international migratory issues. He's done extensive work, especially on transnationalism in Northern Africa, and has published a number of critical studies of migrant networks um, and diaspora communities in that region. Today, however, he's going to be speaking with us about new research that he's doing on city networks and migra migration governance. Thomas, we're very happy to have you here. And of course, we are very happy to have all of you, our listeners here. Uh, before we begin, a few notes on procedure. Thomas is going to be speaking for about 40 to 45 minutes, and while he's doing so, we've temporarily muted everyone, both microphone and video, to ensure that there's minimal disruptions. Um, you should be able to write, I believe, in the text box, if the text box uh, to the right-hand side of your screens if there's any need for clarification, but I ask you to hold all uh, substantive questions to the end of our talk. Now, once Thomas is done, we're going to open up the virtual floor for discussion. And at this point, the audience will be unmuted and you'll be able to ask whatever you like. Um, to do so, you may again write in the text box to the right, and I'll be happy to read your question to everyone. Alternatively, you can use the button at the bottom of your screens, uh, or, or that should appear at the bottom at the very least, uh, which allows you to put your hand up. And when you're called upon, please unmute yourself and ask uh, the question that you have. I think that's it from me for the moment. I'll be back again to moderate during the question period. For now, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Thomas, whenever you're ready. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Um, so let me know how can I share with you the, the PowerPoint now. Um, Oh, it's some screen. Okay, thank you very much. Right, seems to work. Okay, so for me, it's going to be the first uh, online seminar uh, for this uh, lockdown era. So uh, obviously, I'm doing it from from home. So if you hear strange noise like my children fighting or the uh, a bell ringing or anything else, it's normal. Uh, we have to, I suppose, we have to get used to it. Um, right, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present this, uh, for me it's a new research, um, when I started it uh, this uh, um, a year and a half ago when I arrived here in Oxford as a, uh, a fellow of the Maison Française of Oxford. So uh, indeed as you, you, you mentioned, I'm also an associate researcher at Compass, not IMI, International Migration Institute doesn't exist anymore. It's a, my former research institute here in Oxford. Uh, and also I'm a, a, I'm a former uh, research fellow at Migrantaire in, in Poitiers. Um, and so, as I mentioned, it's a new research and it's an ongoing research. Uh, it's not done yet. So I'm going to present um, well, a work in progress. So uh, I, I might have some uh, uh, some issues, some aspects which are a bit vague, and uh, we, you will see that uh, it will be especially the case for the um, the Spanish uh, the Spanish case. Uh, but we'll, I will I will go back to it. I, I, I'm more than happy to hear about what you have to say about your. Your, next, your experience uh, of the city mobilizations in Spain. Right, um, so first of all, a bit of a, a bigger view of, uh, of, of what, the, what I mean by city network and uh, their recent rise on, uh, around migration issues over the last two decades. Well, 
It's a, start, it's a process which started a bit earlier, let's say in the 90s. But uh, yes, from the 90s onward, these city networks, so it means by city networks, I mean group of uh, organization of, of, of cities uh, talking uh, together and uh, working together um, around migration. Uh, you have a range of, of city networks. Uh, it's it's very, a very diverse uh, landscape from very informal conversation to, to very institutionalized networks. So it's it's very varied. So, but um, yeah, you get um, these former ones, the, 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 the first ones uh, created in, in Europe uh, in the late, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, from this period on, world, the migration was pretty much well. It's, it was relatively present in their activities. Right? It's, it was, but um, and and it accelerated in the early two thousands, at the time when the states, but also the European Union and other international organizations started to get interested in cities as a major player for the implementation of of integration policies. That's what we call the local term of integration policies. And the, um, uh, this local term uh, uh, went along with the, the multiplication of, of uh, city networks and, and most of them were supported by external funding like uh, EU funding uh, or the Council of Europe or other international organizations. But uh, from the let's say mid 2000s onwards it started a bit before but let's early or mid 2000s onward you have a new generation of of networks city networks which are much more militant much more advocating for alternative forms of migration policies and 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 this uh, this, this um, the mushrooming of such militant networks uh, developed after the, 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 the series of migration crises or migration policy crises, I would, I would say, between 2010 and 2015. And uh, at a time when uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, migration became for, for cities in Europe and other, in other parts of the world uh, um, a more pressing issue. Just to illustrate what I've just, uh, I'm saying, um, right, so this graph is based on uh, an inventory or, of, of city, migration related city networks I could find around the world. I, find, I found f uh, 53 of them. And uh, in, in blue, you get what I've called these co-opted networks, uh, which have been more institutionalized more supported by uh, by eu and other international organizations and which are much more focused on integration issues integ long-term in or integration of long-term uh, residents and in red you get this new generation of much more militant uh, uh, networks which have uh, have called grassroots networks and you can see that uh, this is a generation well, forget about the, 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 the one um, in the 80s and 90s. We can come back uh, if you want, but it's, uh, it's another story. It's not really another story. So the, in the, this modern time, the contemporary times, uh, it's really starting in the early 2000s. Uh, for example, with, with a network like the Sanctuary Cities Movement in, in the UK, in, uh, which started in 2004. And, and you can, as you can see uh, in the last part, now uh, since the 2010, there are more uh, militant networks which, which are being, being created than uh, co-opted or institutionalized ones. So, and, and of course, the, the, the literature so far uh, has been much more interested in this, in this uh, very institutionalized form of, of networks. Uh, like um, Euro cities like uh, um, Urbact. Well, I, I will present you a number of these uh, uh, EU-led and uh, uh, city networks at a, late, a later, later stage. But so far, yes, yeah, the, the literature was much more focused on on this kind of, of things, and and the militant uh, networks, which are more recent, probably the reasons why 
the scholarship uh, uh, has, has focused less on, on those on those later generation. So my question uh, I would like to address today uh, are the following. So I just would like to give you an overview of these militant networks and, and how they emerged. And, and one of the questions I would like to address and, is how do they manage to upscale the scope of their activism, activism at the international level? And the question, why, the reason why I'm asking for that, just very quickly. So I'm going to, to present my, my research based on the current fieldwork I'm, 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 we are undertaking with a team of, of researchers on France, Italy, and Spain. Um, Spain is not on the map yet because, as I said to you, it's an ongoing research, so um, I haven't been able to, to really clearly map the, um, the, the current networks in Spain. So, uh, But here you get two examples, the Envita in France, so Association Nationale des Villes et Territoires Accueillantes, uh, and the Recosol network, so it's uh, the, the the network of uh, solidary uh, uh, communes or municipalities in, in Italy. Uh, and as you say, the, as you can see there are more national associations uh, focusing around national issues, whereas the, the co-opted networks uh, the, the international, are much more international. And I'm showing you uh, three examples of them. And as you can see, uh, there are Europe, pan-European networks like you get three of them here. Uh, you get the um, the permanent representation of, of local authorities at the Council of Europe. But another network which has been supported by the Council of Europe, which is called Intercultural Cities, and I've added uh, Urbact. Urbact is another initiative which has been funded by the uh, European Union. Another major player I haven't shown in, on this map, but it's key. It's called Eurocities. Um, the, the definition and the, um, uh, and the, the actual difference between uh, co-opted and uh, grassroots networks are sometimes very difficult to, to disentangle uh, because, for example, Eurocities, which was a very spontaneous network uh, which was created in the late 80s in Europe, uh, it was a, a network of, of uh, what we call secondary cities. Uh, it is to say cities which are not the main, the capital of their of their states, uh, but uh, cities which are la very large cities of their of their of their uh, of their respective countries, like Barcelona, Manchester, like Lyon in France, uh, and uh, and Mannheim in 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 Germany, for example. And, and these networks, uh, which was initially very spontaneous, grassroots, uh, uh, meant to voice the interest and the, the, uh, the uh, yeah, voice the, the, the point of view of cities in the building of a European Union. Uh, these, uh, these networks become, became gradually incorporated into uh, European institutions. So, yeah, so to say that things are much, often not uh, as uh, as clear as uh, as that so but yeah um well just to close this bracket on euro cities i'm not going to mention it uh, uh, anymore uh, but yeah so i would like to to focus on this new generation of uh, migration related uh, militant networks um uh, around this free free uh, for example, of France, Italy, and Spain, and uh, in the later at the later stage, I will present an ongoing project, an initiative, which is uh, which is um, uh, supported by uh, key mayors like uh, 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 Leo Luca Orlando in Palermo or Ada Calao in in Barcelona, but also major uh, NGOs in the Mediterranean. And they want to build up a cross Mediterranean uh, uh, network based on this activism, which is and this this initiative is called the the, the Palermo, Palermo Charter Platform Process, and um, uh, it's the, the presenting this uh, 
this initiative uh, it will uh, enable me to, uh, to 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 reflect upon the possibility of upscaling uh, these uh, these uh, grassroots initiatives right okay so just a brief overview just to complicate a little bit more this uh, this landscape of of uh, of militant city networks. As I said, I'm going back, uh, we got two major uh, categories, the, 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 uh, the co-opted network supported by external uh, uh, institutional organizations and the grassroots militant networks, uh, which are much more spontaneous. But within these second categories, you got two subcategories. And you get uh, what I call the city diplomacy networks. I mentioned these Euro cities and, and its constellation. It's a very large, uh, very large uh, subset of, uh, of, uh, of networks uh, included in this, uh, around this uh, overarching Euro cities uh, uh, institution. We've got another example, which is a global parliament of mayors, which is a global organization. Uh, around um, an agenda around the voicing the, the well, it's a voice of global cities, I would say, right? So very large cities, and they uh, mobilize around the issues of of commerce, of uh, global capitalism, of uh, environment, and uh, and migration is part of it as well. But um, there is this second particular subcategories of militant networks, which are much more based around uh, uh, national is issues. And they are much more militant also because they want to voice an agenda which is clearly um, to, to formulate an alternative migration policy. So that is a big difference with former uh, co-opted networks. Uh, they are much more focused on, on the welcoming of new immigrants uh, asylum seekers and and also the formulation of alternative migration agenda, uh, whereas the the, the the older, more established networks are much more focused on integration agendas. And and also uh, the, um, the, the, the the more co-opted, of course, because of their nature, they are much more confrontational in their way of, of acting, and uh, with regard, much less critical to, with regard to to, uh, to state policies. All right. So among the, uh, I quote in this slide a few examples of, of uh, militant networks. So the Association Nationale des Villes Territoires Accueillants in France. I'm going to get back to it in a in a moment. Uh, the Commune Hospitalière in Belgium uh, is another example. The sanctuary cities in the UK and the cities of sanctuary in the US. Um, so the very close names, but a uh, bit different in their in their in their remit. And we got the fearless cities in Europe, which is uh, a rare example of militant networks with uh, an international dimension. And you get also other networks. Uh, uh, we'll get back to them in uh, in the conclusion. Okay, so uh, let's start with my first example, the Association Nationale des Villes et Territoires Accueillants. So uh, you will get to go back to 2016, so we are in the midst of this so-called uh, migration crisis in, in France with the arrival of uh, of asylum seekers uh, from uh, the Middle East and, and, and Africa. And uh, we, got, we are in the midst of the, the, the jungle the, uh, issue, the, the, the crisis in, of the jungle of Calais. Uh, and with the, so the, the, the jungle of Calais has a, a long-standing history. Huh? It started in the, in the late 90s. Um, uh, it's, um, it's a semi-informal uh, camp. Uh, you probably know a little bit about it as well. So it's uh, it's a non-camp. It's uh, it's uh, it's a de facto camp which has been acknowledged by uh, local authorities, but because they had no choice, no other choice. It was it was uh, a place which was uh, the Calais jungle uh, 
um, left to associations to gather the, the, the migrants which were scattered in the cities. And uh, they said, okay, you, you, can, we, you, you can put them, well, they tried to put them on the outskirts of, of the city of Calais. It was, um, yeah, it was a very uh, damp area, very uh, unwelcoming and uh, uh, with a lot of insalubrity. And uh, right, so the, so the, the idea was to, 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 to gather the migrants in the same place in order to better control them and, and, and to, to get rid of them from the city center. That was the basic idea. And Damien Carême, uh, who is the mayor of Grande Sainte. Grande Sainte is a, a, a city which is very close to Calais. It's near Dunkerque. So it's uh, a few kilometers from Calais. And Damien Carême is, uh, is a mayor from the Green Party, the, the party uh, ecologist. And he say uh, he wanted to have a counter, an anti-Calais, an anti-jungle policy. And he decided to set up a camp in the city, but a, a camp which would adopt the HCR standards, which was uh, which was a coup. It was a very. Um, uh, it's also well. It, it attracted a lot of attention because the uh, a UH, UNHCR camp in the mindset of of. Uh, of the French people uh, was designed for Africa, for uh, countries in, for the third world. It was a third world camp. It was a, a camp for uh, countries at war. It was associated with another, um, well, another landscape, another mindset. It's, it was very foreign to all. So the fact of having um, a, a HCR camp on the territory of France was quite a shock for for the uh, for the uh, public opinion, and at the same time it was a response to uh, to, to the Calais mayor, right? so it's a, he, and and Damien Carême uh, sur was surrounded by, by a series of mayors. There was a, a proto network, very local network of mayors supporting this kind of city of of, of initiative. Sorry. Uh, the, uh, the the camp itself uh, did not last for, for long, uh, a year or a year and a half at most, and it was uh, destroyed by um, a fire uh, soon after its opening, because there was a fight in the camp, so it was, uh, it was really rapidly uh, um, destroyed. But still, the, 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 the traction it, it, uh, it produced in the, in the public opinion, he managed to, to attract the attention of other mayors, and they started a conversation uh, around how to promote an alternative way of welcoming these immigrants. So the second step was October 2016, when the, the Calais jungle was dismantled. And uh, at, at that moment, the, the, the authorities, the national authorities, uh, and it's important, it's, it's, it was handled by national authorities, decided to scatter the population of Calais, of the jungle, in uh, all over the, the French territory, including in small villages, uh, in, uh, on a voluntary basis. So the mayors in the, uh, uh, the French mayors say, okay, I'm happy to receive a family or two or a few people from the jungle and and opening a, a dedicated uh, place to host them. So uh, the, the, the dismantling of the Calais jungle uh, triggered, um, uh, was scattered and raised awareness of the welcoming of immigrants, including in municipalities which had never really hosted any of them. So it, 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 has this, it had also this effect among mayors. All right, so the December uh, 2017, you got another reaction. Uh, it was uh, the, the coming of winter, and you had a lot of mayors with a, a small immigrant population, small or large immigrant population to manage. 
but very few means to do so, very few resources, and the, uh, the government was reluctant to, to leave to, uh, to, to these to mayors the possibility to have a resource to, to, uh, to, to host them. So there was a petition uh, which was signed by mayors uh, of large cities like, like Paris, Strasbourg, Lille, Lyon, Bordeaux, and, and Grand Saint, uh, of course, as well. And in September, the, the year after, September, uh, it's a, the, the key step when the Envita was created. And so it's Damien Carême who is the leader of this uh, association still now. And he surrounded uh, around him uh, 30 mayors uh, around the, the notion and the agenda they have tried to promote is the one of accueil unconditional, so non conditional uh, welcoming. Uh, so we, they, they state that they have to welcome anybody, whatever their, their immigrant status, whatever their gender, race, and so on and so, on and so forth, and, and give them, uh, um, uh, well, good conditions to, to, to live, uh, provide them with services, and so on and so forth. Um, in re more recently, in October 2019, uh, the Envita organized its a key event, uh, which uh, in partnership with OCU, which is the Orga Organisation pour une Citoyenneté Universelle, so uh, the Organization for Universal, Universal Citizenship, which promotes also uh, freedom of circulation and, uh, and the uh, uh, universal passport as well. And this event is really embedded in VITA in a more broader international landscape because we invited the uh, representative from the, the city of New York, the, uh, the city of, of uh, Ouagadougou uh, in Africa, and other key mayors like that uh, in, um, uh, from all around the world. Um, right, so now here we go it's not it hasn't been very active for the moment because just soon after that the the, the in, in uh, uh, more recently you had the the, um, the elections the municipal elections uh, you, you had the, the first term just before the lockdown and so far the uh, the invita is uh, like all of us it's in lockdown <laughs> right um so I'm moving on to Italy. Italy has a very rich history of, of uh, city mobilization. It started in the uh, very early 90s, uh, in the, against the background of the Balkan War, and uh, especially the coming of people from Albania. And up until 1990, the Italy, you have to say, know that uh, up to that date, the, of course, the, um, the uh, Italy was a country which signed the, 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 the Geneva Convention with regard to, to, to refugees and asylum, but it had, it had um, a restricti restricted uh, clause. Uh, we, uh, so he would acknowledge, the country would acknowledge refugees only from the European continent up until 1990. So it was a, there was a geographical restrictions to the implementation of this convention. In 1990, the country uh, cancelled, removed this restriction and uh, to open, open up the possibility to, uh, to, to manage uh, asylum and refugees from all over the, the world. So uh, they have to put up very quickly a system to, to manage the refugee populations coming from the Balkan. And, and very early, uh, since 1992, they um, engage with the municipalities, the local authorities, where the, the pivotal uh, level at which this, um, the, the welcoming of refugees would be managed. So they, they set up a network, which, was a, which is called the SPAR, S-P-R-A-R, which is a, a kind of a institution organizing and managing the, uh, the activities and the initiatives of cities uh, with regard to the, uh, the hosting of uh, refugee population. Right, so, um, yeah, so the, the, the SPRA, so it was, the SPRA itself was uh, uh, created uh, 
or if I remember, I, I'm sorry, but um, it's part of my uh, the reason why it's uh, an ongoing research. Uh, <laughs> sometimes these elements uh, escape me. So yeah, the, uh, I think it's, it was uh, finalized in 2002, so 10 years after the, uh, the so, so it, it was really formalized in, in 2002. In 2003, in parallel, you have the creation of an association of, of cities, which was called RECOSOL. So it's interesting, this, uh, the network of solidarity communes, uh, commune solidaire. Uh, they, uh, this network was created not so much for immigration and, and so on, but more for decentralized corpora cooperation with cities in the south. Uh, so for implementing uh, training partnerships and, and, and development partnerships with cities in the south. But in the context of the, um, the, 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 the evolution of the migration policy of, of Italy, they became more, and also in the context of the, um, the so-called well migration crisis, migration policy crisis, I would call them, in, in 2008 and in 2011, uh, you had the, um, the, the Mare Nostrum crisis in, in Italy. So against this background, uh, the Recosol more, became more and more uh, involved on migration issues and much more vocal on migration issues as well. It, it, it also had a, a partnership with AGSI, which is a very uh, quite important uh, pro-immigrant uh, association in Italy. And uh, uh, right, so in this, in this background, there was a, a shift from uh, a decentralized collaboration to migration issues within the RECOSOL. Uh, in so the following, so the, um, right. I got to check something. Just sorry about that. Um, yeah. So yeah, as I said, so the the, the formaliz formalization of the spa it's two thousand two and two thousand three. Um, right. So yeah. So because during this period between. 2008 and 2015, uh, you had a, a transformation of the, uh, the, the, the asylum system, and the SPRA was less and less uh, supported by national authorities. They, they uh, underwent um, major cut in their funding, and in parallel, uh, the, the, the funding was reoriented to our security. Uh, um, um, security um, measures and also a privatization of the asylum management. Um, possibly you, you, you might have heard about a scandal which uh, um, uh, in Rome where uh, people discovered that the, uh, the, um, the, the centers for hosting immigrants was managed by the mafia organization. So the, the more and more the, um, the management of asylum population, asylum seekers, was uh, delegated to uh, private companies, uh, to hotels, to, uh, well, uh, mafia, pseudo-mafia groups, and so on and so forth. And also you had the multiplication of, of what they call the CARA, uh, the closed detention centers, so much more security-oriented detention centers. So in this background, Again, this background, the SPRA was, uh, was, uh, became a kind of a, um, a secondary uh, institution for the, from the point of view of the, of the, of the state. Right, so in, in 2015, um, you, you got the, the, so the mayor of Palermo, Leo Luca Orlando, published the, the Palermo Charter. So I don't know if you have had uh, the occasion to have a look at the Palermo Charter. It's a very militant text, very progressive. And he, it uh, promotes the idea that circulation should be a human right. It should be conceived as a human right. And against this background, the, uh, uh, the, the visa system uh, should be cancelled, and the, uh, the, 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 
the, the, the system of uh, universal passports should be promoted. And Orlando Leo Luca, Orlando is a very influential mayor. And um, he also, yeah, he, he's got he, this kind of, of uh, positioning also for, for local reasons. Uh, he wants to promote the idea of Palermo as um, an open uh, city, as very prone to, to defend human rights in order to move away from the image of a mafia city. So he's coming, he's very sensitive to, uh, very close to, 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 to civil society organizations, but also very well embedded into the networks of city diplomacy around the world. He has strong connections is in, particular, in particular with, with, um, with Germany or Spain, like with people like uh, Ada Colau, Colau in, in, in Barcelona, for example. Uh, but, but Orlando, Leo Luca Orlando is not the only personality uh, mayor uh, involved in the um, on migration issues. And you also, we can also mention, you probably heard about the mayor of, of Riace, Lucano, in the, uh, in the, in the south of, uh, of Italy. Uh, Lucano, who uh, promoted a system of um, free house for immigrants who would like to come and settle in his village for with his fa with, with family. And, and Riace, in Riace Lucano is also a mayor who comes from the uh, civil society organizations. Uh, he, he, he was uh, an act activist in, uh, in human rights uh, organizations. Another mayor who was very famous was uh, Nicolini in Lampedusa, also uh, embedded in uh, different initiatives, a pro-immigrant initiative in, uh, around the world. And another mayor who was uh, more known at the national, the international level, but still Mr. Cacciari uh, in, uh, in Venice. In Venice, who declared Venice as a, a city of refuge, uh, it, he was a forerunner in, uh, in, this, uh, in this area. Uh, in the, in the, I think it started in the 90s in Venice. Right, so the, um, and then uh, we arrive at 2018, which is a turning point, of course, as you can imagine, 2018, and the arrival and the, the, um, the, the, the government who, who was uh, led by the Five Star Movement and the government uh, included uh, Matteo Salvini uh, as uh, the Ministry of Interior of Italy. So coming from the far right, Italian far right. And uh, of course, uh, Matteo Salvini very early on uh, implemented a very security oriented and restricted uh, uh, program. And one of the first thing uh, he did was to almost um, close the SPRA system. Uh, he changed the name, it became the, the S-P-R-O-I-M-I, -I, spro -I -I system, and he limited the, the activities of local authorities and the initiative it could take to statutory refugees. So he excluded the population of asylum seekers from uh, this, uh, from the remit of the uh, of the local authorities. And um, and also in 2018, he had the parliament to adopt the a decree, a decree which was called the Salvini decree, uh, which cancels basically the, the, the most important uh, measure including in this decree is to cancel, to remove the possibility for asylum seekers to register in their host uh, municipality. They will not be entitled anymore to register at the, uh, in their host municipal municipality, which means, I think it's the same thing but you will confirm uh, in Spain, but if you are not registered in your host municipality, it means that it de facto excludes you from the municipal services, uh, the, the support they, the, the, the municipality could, could provide uh, for to immigrants and their, and their children from schools, etc. 
um, you, we had example in the press of children of immigrants which could not go to um, to the to to, to the uh, to school meals. He, he, they were they were not allowed anymore to go to the the, the cantina of the, of the school. Right. Um, so of course this uh, decree uh, and it's this the two dimension of the uh, Salvini policy. Uh, attacking both the, the system, the, the, the role of um, local authorities in the management of migrant population and attacking the rights of immigrants, it uh, triggered a movement of mobilization of, of cities around all, ar all over Italy. Um, right, with my colleague uh, Cristina Del Biagio from Grenoble, uh, we try to map this mobilization, all the cities, several hundreds of cities uh, in, in Italy who declared that they would not implement the Salvini decree. So, uh, well, there is a range of mobilization from a pure statement to an active opposition, of course. Uh, so not every city reacted the same. But what imp is important uh, to, to note here is that um, first, this movement uh, is not specifically uh, a left movement of left cities. So it's, it's, it's also include a lot of right wing cities because uh, they consider that uh, the, the, the um, re removing uh, immigrants from the, the, the city registration would would be a, a huge problem for them for the management of the population and also even including for their control they, because they would not know anymore where the, this immigrant population would be uh, they would be scattered in informal squads it would be very difficult for them to, to manage but the second the second thing I would like to underline here is that a, a large part of these cities uh, involved in anti salvini decree movement are cities which were part of both the SPRA movement, by the SPRA, and the RECOSOL uh, associations, uh, the, uh, the network of solidarity. So there is all this, actually, in Italy, there, there, there is a whole sedimentation of, um, oh, I'm sorry, I think I, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, I forgot to, to, to show you the, the map in question. Right, it's better now. Okay, so the, as I was saying, there was a whole sedimentation in the history of city mobilization of, of Italy since the early 90s. Uh, and and it's, not, it's not coming from nowhere. Uh, it's a, it's, there is a long story. And, and now through this anti-Salvini uh, movement, all the these let sedimentary layers they they uh, come together and they uh, they coalesce into this movement right um, okay now spain i'm going to be very very brief because i don't have that much information about spain um, also because I am working closely with a doctoral student on the case of Spain, which because of the lockdown has not been, she has not been able to do the fieldwork. So she will come and probably she, I hope she will see you uh, in, uh, in, in, in September when she starts her, her field study in, in Barcelona. But uh, we can, this, we'd be very happy to, to have a conversation about that with you. But, uh, as far as I know, what characterizes the Spanish situation is first and foremost the specific role of Barcelona, uh, which is the most when uh, in my in my inventory of uh, city related uh, migration related networks, I found out that Barcelona is the city which is the, the, with the, the, the largest amount of connections. Uh, it's it is. I think it, it is part of 12 different networks, but also the, the city is the host of the United Cities and local government, 
which is a representative uh, uh, body for local authorities at the UN level. Um, so it, it has and it has maintained a long-standing policy with regard uh, and also a long-standing diplomacy, uh, city diplomacy. And it, it has developed its own international agenda for a long time. And I suppose it, has, it is connected with the specific uh, uh, policy situation in Spain with uh, Catalonia, uh, willing to, to develop a policy and a, a position in the world which is, differs from the one of Madrid and, and the, the central government. And, but what's interesting is that there seems to be, you will tell me, huh, but there seems to be a competition between Barcelona and Madrid because Madrid, I found, is also one of the top uh, connected city uh, in the world. Right? It's part of the, 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 the top five of the, 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 the cities which has the largest amount of connection with, with, uh, with um, city networks. Um, so there must be a kind of competition, and I don't know if competition or emulation or whatever you call it, but uh, we can see about that. Right, so um, what I've, we have found out is the existence of two major networks. Uh, one which has been launched by Barcelona itself in 2015, or once again, against the background of the migration crisis and so on and so forth, the resettlement of, of uh, refugees from uh, hotspots and Greece. And uh, so 2015, the, uh, Barcelona launched this Ciudades Refugio, sorry for my accent, and which includes 25 cities, in, including uh, Pamplona, uh, oh, I don't remember uh, which ones. Um, and, and the second one is, where is the uh, Red de Municipios de Acogida de Refugiados, which has been sponsored by the FEMP, which is the uh, national uh, official association of municipalities in Spain. Uh, so, you get the Ciudad de Refugio on the one hand, the, the Red uh, de Acogida on the other hand. There seems to be, once again, a kind of competition between them, uh, because I, I read in the press that um, members of the Ciudad de Refugio, Refugio were, were criticizing the FEMP for being inactive on, 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 uh, asylum, on the migration issues. And they criticize the FEMP for being passive uh, with regard to, uh, to, to migration issues. And it seems to me, but not sure, right? maybe I'm wrong, that the, the red, the red municipio de Acorida, uh, has been built up in reaction to the Ciudades Refugio. So it's a, uh, it's a position that I must confirm, but I'm not sure. Uh, and part of the, this red, I don't know what is the link exactly, uh, it's not clear to me yet, but uh, you get the, the, uh, one regional specific uh, um, uh, red, uh, red network, sorry, uh, which is the one in, in the province of Valencia, uh, which is, we will see, extremely important. It played a, a major role in the, uh, the crisis of the Aquarius in uh, uh, more recently, uh, the, the, the Aquarius bot uh, uh, in 2018. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So Spain, um, more, well, also a, a strong activism with regard to, to, to migration and cities, uh, and which were which is rotating around the, uh, the issue of uh, and the, the place of Barcelona uh, and, and its place in the, in the diplomacy of cities. Right. And finally, I would like to have a word and present briefly uh, what's going on at the international level. So trying to link up uh, the two forms of mobilization in Spain, in, in Italy, and possibly they're trying to, try to, trying to expand it to France as well, the implementation of the Palermo Charter platform process. 
So it has a, it also saw a history which is connected to the search and rescue operation. So the search and rescue operation in which operate uh, large uh, NGOs in the Mediterranean with their boats, including the, uh, the Aquarius, Aquarius, which is a boat managed by SOS Mediterranean and uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders. And, but also a lot of uh, di uh, different uh, organizations. And so initially this um, search and rescue operation was, uh, was coordinated by uh, European authorities and especially the Italian Coast Guard. But from May 2017, the EU and Italy, under the pressure of Italy, started to, to, to transfer the, the, the coordination of the operation to Libyan authorities and especially to Libyan Coast Guards. So if a boat um, rescued uh, uh, immigrants, they would have to refer to Libyan Coast Guards instead of to Italian Coast Guards in order to, to, to know where they could, um, they could uh, uh, dock and, uh, and, uh, and, and release the, the immigrants. Right, so of course the, uh, the, the, the NGOs were very un unhappy uh, about that. And that's one of the reasons why it triggered the Aquarius uh, event, and the, the boat Aquarius, uh, which wanted to, to dock in, uh, in Sicily. And it was refused its, its landing. And, uh, and he, he, for, for several days or weeks, they, uh, they remained unsure where to go. And, and the city of Valencia, backed upon the, the network of, of cities I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, so the Valencia network of, of, uh, of uh, uh, reception of immigrants, they, uh, they say, okay, we are, we are happy to, to, to have you and uh, to have you on board. And uh, so they, they managed to, to solve the uh, situation like that. But the, for, for, the, um, for the NGOs, it was uh, an, alarm, uh, an alarm call. Also, also because in June 2018, you had Matteo Salvini who, who, um, who came to power. So it was a very difficult situation for them. Huh? And the, they started the criminalization of the mobilization of NGOs. So the, um, the, 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 the NGOs were afraid of the losing the capacity to to, to handle uh, their, their, their own activity and also to be forced to, to bring back the, uh, the, the refugees to Libya. So they decided to launch a conversation. They contacted the, the, the first people, the person they contacted was Orlando in Palermo and say, okay, how can we deal with this situation? We cannot talk with uh, European authorities anymore. We cannot talk to national authorities and Italian uh, authorities in particular anymore. Uh, so let's let's try to have a conversation with cities. And so that's the big, very beginning of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, part of the this process. And Orlando, with its based on its network, contacted uh, mayors in Germany. Uh, in Berlin, in particular, he contacted Adacola in in, uh, in Barcelona, and Adacola uh, came to Rome in February 2018. She had to meet the Pope, and she said to to Orlando and other uh, Italian mayors uh, to say, "Okay, I'm coming to 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 Rome. So what about having a, a, a meeting together?" And so that's when they decided to launch the Palermo platform process. And including now in this uh, uh, process, you get a consortium of NGOs, like so I have got a list of them here, European Alternative, Emergency, Humboldt, Vanuyana Governance Platform, Inura, but you also, the, the major ones actually are Open Arms, uh, of course, uh, Zeebrücke in Germany, and also um, uh, uh, Med Alarm, uh, you get, yeah, so these are the key players. And on the city side, you got Berlin, Valencia, Zaragoza, uh, Syracuse, Milan, Naples, Barcelona, and Bologna. 
uh, you, and they are trying to expand to other cities, including French cities. They are uh, move uh, movements. Uh, they trying to, they are trying to approach Envita. So for at the moment, I don't do not have uh, a lot of information because they want to keep it secret. They, they don't want to really to disclose what's going on, which is understandable because uh, uh, it's really uh, it's a tentative process. I mean, it's um, they 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 don't want to disclose any information that would be invalidated in the in the few uh, in, in the days to come. So it's uh, uh, so that's why we where we are. But uh, at some point, they want to organize, they were supposed to organize in June this year a large conference in, um, in Italy. Uh, but uh, it will take place more in, uh, after, after the lockdown, so after this summer. Um, and so the idea, the basic idea of this uh, uh, initiative is to secure for the, 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 the NGOs uh, safe harbors. And places where they could land, where they could dock, and uh, and release immigrants. Uh, so it's well, how to secure the the sea to land uh, transfers of immigrants, and not in Libya, uh, avoiding Libya, of course. Right. So that's in, what is interesting. So finally, in a few words, I would like to conclude. Uh, few elements that we learned through these three four case studies uh, about these militant networks. So first, they were created at national level uh, in the, um, around issues of uh, national political issues. So the Calais jungle in France, the Salvini decree in, uh, in, um, in Italy, and uh, also the uh, the specific uh, place of uh, uh, Barcelona in uh, in the Spanish context, probably the Aquarius the Aquarius crisis in uh, so it's a Mediterranean crisis in um, in Spain as well. Right, so it's it's spurred by national issues, but behind these national issues, you have you you also always see the pivotal role of key mayors like Damien Carême in Grand Saint, Leo Luca Orlando in Palermo, Ada Colau in Barcelona, and other people. But the, the, and what is interesting is that these mayors are never mayors from the capital uh, of uh, of the states of their respective states. It's always other cities. And the three third elements I would like to, to highlight uh, in my talk is the role of civil society organizations. Uh, they are a bit less in France where it, uh, the, the, the OCU movement, so the, the organization for the universal, uh, universal citizenship, it, it came a bit later. Uh, but for the other, um, the other countries, the civil society's actors are always present, and um, the, uh, the open arms in uh, in uh, in Spain. You got uh, the AGSI I mentioned in Italy. Uh, you got the uh, so yes, they are they are they always play a very influential role, and it's it's particularly the case when it comes to upscaling these militant uh, movements. Uh, through the Mediterranean example, we have seen that these search and rescue NGOs are the key players for uh, behind the upscaling of the uh, uh, Mediterranean mobilization of cities around migration. Right. Uh, so I will my, 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 I will stop here. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and now I'm very looking forward to our uh, conversation and your questions. Thank you.